This morning I want to share with you a revelation that God gave me and I know that this same revelation will lift up your spirit. God can be found in the places you least expected. And they can be available to people that you least expected. In most cases, God is available in our hiding places. Places where we have taken refuge. You know, the, the, the natural expectation of humanity is that God is supposed to be with people who are doing well, who have peace in their home, who have stable marriages, who are not separated, who are not divorced, who are not widowed. But contrary to that, God gave me a different view of where it can be found. He showed me that in the past, there were people that were doing very well. But he told his prophets to go to widows' homes. Those are places that nobody could have thought that God can be available. If you asked anybody naturally, where do you think God can be? They could tell you, probably in the palace. Probably in the king's home. But God was not in the king's home. He was in the home of a widow who had nothing. She had no food. When Elisha was looking for a place to stay, there were men that were married and they were doing well. They had uh, power families. But God chose to take him to a home of a woman that has of a stayed without a child. And the people knew that the reason why she never had a child is because God was not with her. Because they believed if God was with her, then she should have delivered. God can be available in places you least expected. We are reading Exodus chapter 2 and verse 14. In that place where you are hiding, it is God that has purpose so that you can meet. Sometimes in your low moments, it's God that brings you down that you can meet. Exodus chapter 12 verse 14. I can read from verse 11. One day, after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were and watched them at their hard labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. Glancing this way and, and, that, and, it, and that and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Verse 13. The next day, he went out and saw two Hebrews fighting. He asked the one in the wrong, why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? Verse 14. Verse 14, who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, what I did must have become known. Verse 15, 
When Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses, but Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in the Midian, where he sat down by a well. Now, we have grown up knowing the story of Moses. At one time, he tried to do good, but he turned against him. And therefore, sometimes when you do good and nobody appreciates, you shouldn't be offended. You're not the first one. Everybody within the kingdom does good and no one appreciates. Actually, as a matter of fact, you are good, that can be the reason why you want to be killed. If you hear people planning to kill you, it is not because you have done anything wrong to them. It's because you showed mercy. You showed love. But we are children of love. We can never stop. The Bible says, don't be wary to do good. It's part of us to be good people. It's part of us to do good. You shouldn't stop simply because there are people saying anything about it. Moses grew up and he knew his people. And the Bible says one day he went out and he saw an Egyptian beating one of his own people. And then he, he looked around and he said, nobody is here. And therefore, if I don't rescue my fellow Hebrew, he might be killed by an Egyptian. In any case, these Egyptians are beating our people. And then Moses went ahead without the help of the Hebrew that was being killed by himself. He killed the Egyptian and he buried him by himself. And then he believed nobody was able to see. Now, the next day, he found his own people now fighting. And then he was rescuing one of them. Then one of them told him, you want to kill me like you did the Egyptian yesterday? Then Moses realized that whatever he had done was visible to people. Yet when he looked around, nobody was able to see. Um, this one teaches you that don't imagine that nobody knows you. It is, <laughs> it is wrong to imagine that nobody knows what you do. It's well known. And one of these days you might be surprised that they know it better than you do. They even have a photo. <laughs> it is known. No matter how you pretend, it is. To you, it is private, but to be informed, it is public. There are people who walk around the world and say, nobody knows. Whatever I do, I do it far. No one is too intelligent than the invisible cameras of the world. No one. That's why the Bible says that any sin anybody commits will expose him one day. There are the invisible cameras. The kisses say, the walls of ears. God made the Holy Spirit to be a silent investigator. That's why when Elisha, there was a king who wanted to fight Israel. But every time he wants to approach, God refers to Elisha. Then the king asked, who is this that tells our enemies, whatever we want to do, they already know. Then he was told there is a man called Elisha. He listens to your conversation, even in your bedroom. I said, how, how does that happen? <laughs> how does that happen? 